Hey Paisano, Score Chaser here, and today we are going to be making Super Mario Brothers Fire Flower Meatballs and Pasta. It is a recipe that I use for the meatballs for around every Christmas and New Year's. It is a very good appetizer that goes over well with uh, parties. It's, it's just good. Uh, people always clamor and ask for me what the secret is, and you're going to get it right here right now. So, the first thing we're going to be needing is a crock pot. Any standard crock pot will do. All you need to do is make sure that it is big enough to hold three dozen meatballs. That's a lot of meatballs. Now we are going to set this to low. It is important that it's set to low because if we set it to high, then things just end up badly. Now you might be asking yourself, what could be going into this three meatball recipe that makes it so super duper delicious? Our first ingredient is going to be sriracha. We are going to be using exactly nine ounces. The second ingredient, which constantly gets people turning heads when I tell them, but it is 100% true, grape jelly. Now we are going to be using an 18 ounce jar of jelly. These two might seem like they won't mix, but trust me, they go together beautifully. Our first step after setting our crock pot to low is we are going to take our whole bottle of sriracha sauce and we're just gonna dump this bad boy right in. Yeah, yeah. This video was going to be up sometime in late December, but sadly, due to technical difficulties with my footage, we could not use it. So, for the plus side for me, I get to eat this again. Haha. <laughs> okay. That is our sriracha. Almost. Gotta get all of it. Because you don't waste sriracha. Okay. That is our sriracha. We then open up our grape jelly. Take an implement of scooping. And we are going to get all this jelly out. Yeah, that's the sound of the winter season. There we go, we got our jelly out. And I'll spend a little bit off camera just scraping this jar to get as much as I can. But basically all you do is you add the two ingredients together. Take a spoon or other stirring implement that you might use and just kind of start to mix this a little bit as best you can. It's going to be hard because the meatballs are frozen. I'm using frozen meatballs, by the way. Um, you can make your own, but it's a lot easier to use the frozen ones, depending on how well, for how long these need to cook for, and it just saves time, too. So I would say about every 45 minutes or so, go ahead and open up your crock pot. Give these bad boys a stir. And this is going to take exactly four to five hours. I know I said exactly and gave you two variables, but it's going to take anywhere from four to five hours to fully cook these. Now, what will happen is that the sriracha and the grape jelly will mix together and kind of form uh, like a, a caramelized coating on these meatballs. It is so delicious. So what we're going to do is we are going to leave these bad boys here and then we are going to get started on our from scratch pasta sauce to go with these meatballs. Hey, welcome back. We're going to be doing the sauce right here. I usually like to make my own sauce uh, from scratch. I'm going to be doing kind of like the half step method for this using a sauce pack mix. Uh, you can use Pregu or Regu or Canned or whatever you want to use, that's fine. Uh, but I always feel that making your own sauce it always has more, you know, it's more flavorful. So this calls for a one and three fourths cup of water. I'm going to put that in the pot. A six ounce can of tomato paste. Tomato paste is always a pain to get all out of the can for whatever reason. I think I 
like that. Helps if we turn on the stove. The sauce mix. And that's that. We just uh, stir that up. I can also add, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. It says to use butter, but if you can use olive oil for anything Italian, I recommend it. It goes over very well. Just want to stir this up. And we are just going to let this cook on its own, which is the best way to do a sauce is just to let it cook on its own. Make sure we get all the dry ingredients and the tomato paste broken down. Now I am going to recommend some power-ups. It's a new segment that I'm recommending to add to already pre-established recipes to give them some more pizzazz and oomph. With my own normal sauces, I always like to add at least one cup of red wine. I'm using a burgundy right now. And we are going to add, because of Mario, we're going to be adding a can of mushrooms. red clad plumber would approve of that and a package of frozen celery not I'm sorry not celery I'm very tired in the new year this is frozen spinach spinach always to me tastes very good in any kind of red sauces it also goes very good in soups I highly recommend it plus it is very good for you so we're just going to plop the spinach into there. Please. There we go. Got the spinach. And over time we'll break that down as it falls. Just going to stir it up. And let that go. Also, tomato sauce has a tendency to be very acidic or at least if you're very sensitive to that there's something that you can do to cut down on the acidity of the tomato sauce this is a trick I learned while I was in culinary school that if you add about a half tablespoon of sugar white sugar to any tomato sauce it will cut down the acidity of the tomato sauce so if you are prone to getting like heartburn or acid reflux or anything like that from a tomato sauce, this will help cut down on that. It won't completely alleviate it, but it will help cut it down. Now we're just gonna let this cook for a while. The packaging says about 15 minutes, but I feel that the longer you let a red sauce simmer, the better it will be. So we got that. Cover this. And we're going to stir this about every 10 minutes. Get it on medium. Make sure that you have a spotter for helicopters while you're stirring your sauce. If you get that reference, I love you. Now, while we're here, it's been about three plus hours. We're going to check on our meatballs. And as I said, it's important. Let me get out of the light so you can see this to stir them. They are coming along very nicely. They smell fantastic. It's a very sweet, spicy smell coming off of the meatballs. Very good. Now, I'm going to be putting these individually on top of the pasta, just like spooning them out. I would not recommend mixing them with your sauce unless you run a really hot, sweet sauce. 
but these are very good to eat by themselves on a fork or a toothpick, make a hoagie out of them. They are fantastic. But these still need a little bit more time since there's still some liquid in the pot. So we are going to remain simmering that. We are also simmering our sauce. And we will come together once this is all ready. Now the final step, which I don't believe I need to educate anyone on, is that you need to boil some spaghetti. Now <laughs> all you need to do is put a pot full of water on, <laughs> turn on your burner, put the water in the pot, wait for that to boil, put the noodles in, and drain it. That's it. If you didn't know, now you do. <laughs> I'll catch you back when the sauce is ready and the meatballs are done and we will plate and taste our special treats. And here we are. This is the absolute final product. Let's uh, lift this a little bit so you can see it. I even served it on a Mario plate. Found those at uh, the store. I thought it was festive enough to go with what we were doing. So I topped this with a little bit of uh, grated Parmesan cheese. So let us dig into the noms. Get some meatball. Spicy and sweet, very delicious. And the pasta. Came out absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you for joining me. As always, I'm Score Chaser. And remember that life stinks, play games, and be awesome. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And please make sure to follow me at SkunkWansataco on Twitter and at Fabo Meerkat on Twitter as well for updates on upcoming projects and videos. Thank you again for joining me and have an amazing day.